Hello, my name is Moja and welcome to Polyglot Principles. This is the channel where I teach you, I help you to learn a language like a genius by teaching you the principles of language learning. Uh, and today's video is about, let us see, today's video is about how to get the most out of a language exchange, right? So this, this what I'm talking, talking about today can apply to language exchanges, but it also applies to other things. Okay, just a minute. I need to set something up. Right. So this applies to language exchanges, but it also applies to uh, conversations, right? So maybe you're, you have this kind of, you're learning a foreign language and you're speaking with a native or you're speaking with someone who speaks the language and you're, you're not sure what you should do in this conversation in order to learn the most, in order to learn the language as quickly as possible. Maybe you get the feeling that you're talking to the native in, in you're talking to someone you're having a conversation with a language partner but you feel like you're not getting the most out of it or you feel like you're not improving so so you want to know hey how do i get the most out of the language exchange so this is what this is this is the topic of, of this conversation um uh, before we begin I, as usual i have a question for you right what do you think should be avoided in a language exchange what what things do you think that look these ones have to be avoided because they make they make it so that you get the least out of a language exchange. Right? Please pause this video and in the comment section below write down what you think. Uh, let me know what you think are the things that must be avoided in any language exchange. All right? So let's now dig into it. Let's figure out how to get the most out of your language exchange. Right? How to do the perfect language exchange. So here's, here's one of the first things you need to know. Right. Um, The time, the time you spend with a conversation partner who speaks the language is golden. Right? This is where most of your learning and progress in the language is going to happen, in these conversations. Right? So, but this can, since, <laughs> if, I'm trying to, if you're trying to learn German and you have a, con a German conversation partner, someone to speak with in German, if you want to get the most out of this conversation with them, you want to make sure that as much of the conversation as possible is in German. What we really want is 100% of the conversation to be in German. 100% of the conversation should be in the language you're trying to learn. Now you might say, okay, Moja, that's, yeah, that, that's interesting. Um, the, the problem is that I'm a beginner. I'm not, how am I gonna have my entire conversation in the target language when I don't know enough words? I, I just started yesterday. How can I do that? It's good you ask, right? So. At the beginning, you may have to start with crutches, right? So I'm going to describe what I do, right? So as I mentioned many times, I'm, I'm, I'm currently learning German, right? So at the very beginning, I didn't know have enough vocabulary. I didn't know enough grammar. I didn't know, I couldn't even say a single sentence in German, right? It was very hard for me, right? So what did I do at the beginning during my conversations where I was unable to express any ideas? So at the beginning, I started with a crutch. I, what, what I would do is, I told my conversation partners, I tell them, look, I have one rule, no English. We're going to use only German, right? Um, and okay, like, okay, so, so how does this work? Well, first thing is, now, it, it may happen, wow, sweating. Yeah, it's really hot over here, it's like 27 degrees today, <laughs> centigrade. Okay, so... At the beginning, I use crutches, which means if I don't know enough vocabulary, I'm also going to use a dictionary. Like, for example, Google Translate. I use that a lot in my, usually my conversations are over Skype. So I'll, I'll go, to, we'll have the conversation and I'll open a dictionary like Google Translate. So let's say I'm trying to express an idea. Like, uh, let's say it's the very beginning and I don't even know how to say what my name is. Yeah. Ish bin Moja. Let's say I don't know how to say that. I am, I am Moja. Ish bin Moja. If I don't know how to say that, Right. Literally, during the conversation, when it starts, I'm just, I'm going to tell the person we can't use any English. You can make suggestions in German, but we can't use any English. So if I don't know how to say I am Christian, or I, I, I am Moja, or I am John, whatever, what I'm going to do is, I'll go to Google Translate and look for the word I. Right. I type in I, it will give me ish. Then when I open my mouth, I'm only going to speak the target language, ish. Right? And then I look for am, bin. Moja, ish bin Moja, okay? 
and then uh, just keep going that way, man. At the very beginning, it's going to be Tarzan-like, right? So at the very beginning, it's going to be hard. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to express these ideas. You have to keep referring to you have to keep referring to the dictionary, right? And you might. Uh, one thing I want you to know is that this is not permanent. It's a temporary state of affairs. What I noticed when I was doing German was that after about three to four such conversations, it became very comfortable and easy. So that's the first step, right? The first crutch is you use a dictionary, right? But you maintain a no English rule with your partner, right? This is kind of strange, but what's going to happen under these conditions is that you're forcing yourself to use your language, to use the target language. And you get, you're sending a message to your brain. You're telling the brain, look, we need this language to survive. There is no option. We have to learn it. So your brain is very attentive, right? Now, that's the first step, right, of using the language. If you're at the very beginning, you need a dictionary. But after a while, even the dictionary becomes a crutch. So after a couple of conversations, for example, with German, what I did was I threw away the dictionary, right? I forbade, I forbade myself from checking the dictionary. So I'm not allowed to check the dictionary, and the person I'm talking to cannot speak to me in English. Or they only have to speak to me in German, right? Or in the target language, whatever the target language is. Now you're like, okay, but what, 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 what if now I can't use a dictionary? What if I don't know what a word is? What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to try to express it in a different way using the language. And what if I get completely t stuck? No problem. We move on to a different topic, right? But I'm, no one is going to tell me what the word is in English during the conversation. I want to get my mind used to only using the language. Okay, and then you're like, another question. Well, what if, the other, what if my conversation partner says something that I don't understand? Then I'll ask him to say it again, right? And if I still don't understand, we'll move on to a different topic. This at the very beginning will be uncomfortable. I agree, it was uncomfortable at the very beginning. But after a few conversations, three or four, it became normal, right? I mean, after, after let's say, by the sixth conversation, sixth or seventh conversation, with, with my conversation partners in, 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 in German, I reached a point where I was able to have a full conversation purely in German, right? And, and this is something that's achievable. Now imagine that. Imagine that you have a 30-minute 30 30 session or one-hour conversation purely in the language. You will learn the most when you use and have your intera interactions purely in the language, right? Now, people typically do not do this. People, it's very easy to depend on the languages you already know. What will typically happen in, 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 when you have, during a conversation or a language exchange, what will typically happen is you'll find someone speaking, for example, if I'm trying to learn German, I'm going to start asking questions in English. When I get stuck, I'm going to use an English word. Then the conversation partner is going to, if they speak English, is going to start explaining things to me in English. At the end of the day, at the end of the conversation, we've spent 98% of it in English. We've spent no time learning the target language, right? If you don't use the language, you're not going to learn it that well, or you're going to learn it slowly, if at all, right? So you want to keep the conversation 100% in the target language from the very beginning. And I've shown you how to do that. If you use a dictionary and you only pronounce, you speak out the, 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 the German word, the word in your target language, and you force your partner, you tell your partner to only use the target language, from the very beginning, your entire interaction is in the target language. So this is the most important. Look, there's many other tips I'm going to give you, but if you have no time and you only want to do one thing, this is the one thing you should do. 100% of the conversation in the target language, right? Sometimes there may be some sleeps, the person might speak a bit of the foreign language, but what, I want, what I'm saying is you want to have as much of it as possible, right? 100% of the conversation should be in the target language. And if there are slips, no worries. Just recalibrate and go back to 100%, all right? What else can you do, right, when it comes to these uh, conversations, right? Here's a, here's a second tip, very important tip of what is going to make a perfect language exchange. Avoid perfectionism. Perfectionism is a freaking disease. Perfectionism is fear in disguise, right? Don't, like, don't try to speak perfectly, right? Like, uh, so th th this can happen to you in a, in, a, in a language exchange. You're having a conversation with a native, let's say, you start speaking, 
and you're trying to speak perfectly, but you notice that you're not speaking perfectly. You're making a lot of mistakes, right? So you become self-conscious and afraid. So you start actually speaking worse, right? You start communicating worse than before. You'll even find yourself forgetting things that you know how to do, right? And now you're feeling bad, you're feeling like a loser, like a failure, like you can't do it. When you're in this kind of emotional state, your capacity to produce reduces even more. You'll become even worse at this, right? Even worse. You begin to underperform. So it's very important that uh, don't focus on perfection. Don't even focus on speaking well. Here's your, the entire focus when you're doing a language, when doing a language exchange. Your focus is to communicate, especially at the very beginning. All you care about is communicating an idea. If you communicate an idea in broken, in broken English or broken German or broken whatever the language is, if you're able to communicate the idea, which means the other person understands what you're saying, that is a success. That's all you're doing, communicating. And what you'll notice is that over time, you become better and better at communicating, more and more refined, more and more nuanced. But the key is, first of all, to communicate. And that is, after all, the most important thing, right? So, I mean, I guess an analogy is, imagine, imagine having a car that doesn't work, but spending a lot of time on uh, how it looks. You, you, painting the tires correctly, painting the, I don't know, painting the, the body of the car correctly, making it look stylish, right? Imagine an engineer who spends all his time making the, the car look stylish, but you get into the car and it doesn't run, right? Is that a successful car? Of course not, right? Is that a good engineer? Of course not, right? First of all, you want to get the car to work. This is the first thing, right? Is before the engineer tries to make a beautiful car, let's first figure out if this concept of a car works. Let's first get the, the, the damn thing to work. Once we know that the damn thing works, now let's make it beautiful. Let's design it. Let's make it attractive. Let's you see what I, let's give it a name, etc. This is the same with communication, right? When you're using a language, the first most important thing is to co communicate. You wanna find a way to communicate ideas in the language that works. Once you know how to communicate, you can focus on the beauty, right? Making things look good, you know, like which word to use, how to say it, the beauty, the aesthetics, the aesthetics of, of secondary. First thing is communication, right? Uh, so that, that, that is key. Focus on communication and don't be afraid to speak like Tarzan, right? Tarzan speak. Me, here, come. Yeah? You, go. Right? Uh, we, happy, today. Okay? Uh, no, look at that sentence. We, or a sentence like, I go school. I go school today, right? Or I go school now. This sentence is not grammatically correct, right? But if I say I go school now, you know exactly what I mean, right? And I have communicated an idea. So as far as a language, a language exchange is concerned, I have succeeded. And then later I can figure out the, the nuances, I am going to school today, I am going to school now. Those nuances come later. First, communication, okay? I've beaten a dead horse with this concept. And here's the third thing that you need to do in a language exchange, right? That will make a perfect language exchange. And here it is. Be humble. Be fucking humble. When you're having a conversation with the conversation... Well, when you're having a conversation with a conversation partner, right, you're the student and your partner is the teacher. I'm trying to learn German. My attitude is I don't know any German. The teacher knows German, I don't know. I'm the student, he's the teacher. Therefore, if the teacher says something is wrong, I accept that is wrong and I change. If the teacher says I've mispronounced something, I copy the correct pronunciation. If the teacher says this is a weakness, it's a weakness, I change it, right? The really foolish thing is for me to try to resist, the, the, resist training, resist the lesson. The teacher is telling me, look, you've pronounced this wrong. Instead of me changing the pronunciation, I'm saying, no, 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 I've watched a couple of movies, this is how it should be, right? Or the teacher tells me, you know what? Your biggest problem is that, I don't know, you're not conjugating verbs correctly. 
Instead of accepting that I'm not conjugating verbs correctly and learning how to conjugate, I begin to struggle with the teacher and say, no, uh, or I disagree, you know, my conjugation is actually pretty good, right? So you, you don't want to do that, right? Be humble, be a student. The attitude is that you don't know and the teacher knows, right? If there is a disagreement in, let's say, the spelling of something and the teacher says it's this way, the teacher is right. Just take that attitude. Of course, the teacher is not always right, but you want to take the attitude of the student. The more resistant you are to instruction, the less you will learn. The more resistant you are to people correcting your mistakes, right, the less they're obviously going to try and correct the mistakes, and the, the less you're going to learn. Of course, the inverse works. So this is a, this is this is a very important principle. You want to be humble, right? Be humble. You want to be as malleable as possible. You want to be, in this case, you want to copy a child. You want to be flexible, uh, zero resistance, right? Sometimes in German, I experience this a lot, where I, I have several German uh, conversation partners, and they come from different regions of Germany, and they have different accents. So sometimes I learn one accent, one pronunciation, when I'm with one teacher. Then I go to another teacher, and that teacher will give me a different pronunciation. A good example is a word like, 20, right? So, some of my conversation partners say 20, and my other conversation partners say 20, right? Now, it's easy, f but you see, when I'm with my teacher, I have to follow what my teacher says. If my teacher says 20, I say 20. If my teacher says 20, I say 20. And, but if I'm resistant, I'm only going to stick to one way, Tzvansish. I'm only going to stick to Tzvansig. And then I'm going to learn less. But if I'm open to all of these pronunciations, that just creates a lot of language variety in my mind. Which means that I'm actually able to... Which means that I'm actually able to, to do more and communicate more. Sorry, I have, I have a bit of no, noise in my environment. All right, so I think we've gone through everything, every, we've gone through everything in the video, uh, all the ideas that I wanted to cover. I wanted to remind you that every single day at 8 a.m. Central African, every Monday, sorry, every Monday at 8 a.m. Central African time, I publish a new video. So please, uh, if you want to see more videos, you want to learn more about this topic, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, please uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. Ding, 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 ding. And this will notify you whenever I publish uh, a new video. Otherwise, look, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was uh, valuable to you. And I hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.